Ava, acquiring the skill of hacking, you managed to leverage your edge that let you acquire such skills that you may not possess. You did a fantastic job, and you got that hacking skill. You're a jack-of-all-trades, or a jill-of-all-trades, perhaps. <laughs> you deduced what the password was with the help of your um, fellow study group members. You have her phone, you have complete access to it, and you went to her address book and found your phone number, one of your phone numbers, and uh, three or four others. None of them appear to be local. I hand over the PDA. Does it also have a lock on it? It's been a while yeah. since I used a PDA. We'll say... <laughs> Something like an old, mm. old-fashioned Blackberry. <laughs> no, you know, I think it's, it's, I think it's just simply comes on. Simply comes on. Yeah, let's turn it on and see what, if any, we can find something that matches those numbers on that. A lot of dog pictures. Um, a picture of uh, a, a young man who she is with, who occurs to you, this is not a romantic um, relationship, probably an older brother. Um, you see her uh, shaking the hands um, in two of the pictures of probably um, like Jewish dignitaries, perhaps someone high up the political ladder of this time. See a picture of a, um, believe it or not, a paper target with four shots almost dead center in a little diagonal, a little diamond pattern. Um, she couldn't really show off her skill during combat, sadly. Her roles were not that good. But um, if this is uh, her Target practice uh, record. Um, looks like she at one time was a pretty good shot. Man, this is upsetting. Just, well, just pick one at random, I guess. Yep. Yeah. There's a, there's a. Um, oh, w would her contact uh, list show uh, who she called most recently? It does. Um, the name Ira shows up with a phone number. <laughs> that has a different area code than the United States. Uh, okay. Can I use common knowledge to see if it's a number, an area code that I've heard of before? Is the area code seemingly overseas? Nine seven two. Looks like it has a like that weird prefix with the plus sign in front of it. Mm -hmm. so like plus zero one nine seven two and then some numbers. This might be an international number. Looks like Shit. the time is about 7.45, the last call. 7.45 p.m. this evening. Mm. Hmm. Ira. There's no, there isn't a last name? <clears throat> There's not. Gosh. Another car <sighs> passes by the front of the house. This one has its lights on. Oh, oh. More people going to investigate? Oh, dear. It's not a police car. By lights on, I mean headlights. These headlights. This car did not pull in with its headlights off. Oh, okay. Did he pull in next door or into one of the other houses? He passed the front of this house deeper into the cul-de-sac. Oh. More people going to investigate this place? That seems uh, kind of odd to be doing that. Like into the evening like this. Yes, they were 
<laughs> summoned think... by other means. Um, yeah, I think we like tripped an alarm thing. somewhere. Oh boy, did we? I don't know. Well, if Tante is saying that we needed to leave at that moment, maybe, maybe they are all in cahoots. <laughs> Um, one thing we can hope is that this other person that went further down is a neighbor and saw somebody trying to get into the broken tape as they passed by. Maybe. Does the car look like it's normal if we go look in the window? Move to where you would like to go look. You know the layout of the court. Did it just pass by the front? It's in the cul-de-sac now, you said? Yeah, any any car going by is going to pass the front of Lisa's Gray, Lisa Gray's house. Um, there is no like street that goes down to either side of the house, just the street out front. Okay. Uh, I'll go over towards, uh, let's see, Lisa, Lisa's office, maybe, so I can get a good look out the window. Catch him coming across. It's like if there's some lights happening, maybe I can spot if it's a police car or a detective's car or just a regular old car. It's a it's a very nice, um, I would call it like a German manufacturer um, sports car, probably an Audi. Mm. Pure white, pearly white, shiny. Looks like it's in immaculate condition and very late mm -hmm. model and from the sound it made when it went by um probably a pretty powerful car the light it stops the lights go out the interior dome light on this car does light up when the front door opens and you see a gentleman that looks like this oh get out what a shame my god i know that guy i used to have a crush on that guy <laughs> i love it he was in batman ah. <laughs> full lips pale skin lanky tall mm. ava seems to have a type huh <laughs> <laughs> he, he's not wearing a ninja costume <laughs> Yeah, but she's also not wearing his hoodie. <laughs> oh, gosh darn it. Yeah, that is the coroner dude, guys. Isn't it? That yeah. Name? Yeah, that's the one we were talking about earlier. <laughs> <laughs> I'm dead. Benny's from heaven. Dead. One falls into... Ava's tray. Oh, goodness gracious. I'm dead. <laughs> Thank you kindly. I'm just going to keep this photo up right here. <laughs> <laughs> so a cop and a courier get into spooky uh, shenanigans. <laughs> yeah, we read, we read on the thing that uh, he was... He is doing something weird. That's the whole reason why there may be a body down there in the first place, because it's from the morgue. So he, mm -hmm. he, he is not, he is not a good person. He's doing something weird to man's body right now. Well, not now he's here, but who knows? What if he, what if he does something to Aufa's body? We can't let that oh, happen. No. We need to well, go. The good part is I think we took most of her personal <clears throat> items that she had some sort of uh, her stuff. of her you know attachment to so they can't make her into a ghost hopefully no but what mark? They try? this is bad on the one hand you would think that um, it would be a simple thing to uh to pop one of her eyeballs out of its socket or to cut off a, a little bit of hair 
or to shave off a couple layers of skin or to cut off a toe or a finger or Not something like that. that they mentioned was a material item. It was part of it. Those were also people that he was able to torture. Right. And on the other hand, thankfully, you would imagine that when she perished, her spirit probably went on to its greater yeah. final reward rather than be oh. trapped. I would hope so, because that would be terrible. Well, maybe, okay, maybe we don't have to go over there. Plus, that's a little too many guys that I'm comfortable, that, that I'm more than comfortable with being around. So, <laughs> let's, uh, let's wait this out. <laughs> we can just, it's, we can just stake it out and see what happens until it's then. It's also strange that one didn't care about coming in. The, you mean the the cop? Yeah, one one came in complete blackout mode, and the other one didn't care. Mm. It's weird. You're super right. A Benny for right. Shep indicates that perhaps one of these is a trained combatant, and the other less so. Yeah, pretty boy with glasses. Man, man, can't. Shep's going to go to the back or to the kitchen windows. There is no Are window in the kitchen. The kitchen's dead center of his house. <laughs> What's this thing in the back? Oh, never mind. That's somebody's bedroom. Okay. That's, well, Marissa's bedroom is in the, the, the northeast corner, if you will. It is, well, curr it is currently unoccupied. Now, I was trying to think, which side is... I've got so much stuff overlapping here. Uh, I was trying to see. There's the kitchen. I'll put, up the, um, I'll put up the image again that is the map of this cul-de-sac. And perhaps that will provide the clarity that you're... Yeah, you're yeah I was just trying to... To see if there was a way to look and see if there are lights or anything in the backyard next door without actually going out the back door. Sure. You go into Marissa's room and you can kind of see the back, the back of the man's house, Matt's house. Um, yeah. You know that there was a floodlight above his back door. This is the door that was slightly open. I think a Hoover mm -hmm. would have told you that is how she gained entrance. That light was not on, however. Oh. Okay. Is it on now? It is not. Okay. From that bedroom window, you can see the, uh, the Monte Carlo in the driveway and the Audi just outside of the driveway in the cul-de-sac circle. Okay. Uh, I'll get a. I'll get out of the office area. Mm -hmm. And thing, all the windows on the side of the house are bedroom ones. But Marissa's is not yep. in her bedroom, right? Yeah. <laughs> well, she is not. She's with her mother. I will. Let's see, Ava, Ava, where will you go? Could well there's a fence in the back of Lisa Gray's house, right? There certainly or is. No. Yeah? Okay. Ava's tiny. She could stay hidden behind the fence and peek through the little thickets, <laughs> maybe, while it's dark. Sure. Maybe it could spot something a little better, just being out and about, but she'll be as quiet as possible, and she'll let the others know that maybe she can spot something. <clears throat> While they still have their dark vision. Okay. Let's see. Do I have to roll a stealth? <laughs> on, this, on this map, I'm just going to... Um probably put you in the backyard 
if there's just a, yeah, I did when I did the, this map up. There's just enough green. How about I put you like there, next to the house, but inside the confines of the of the fence. And I think the picture mm -hmm. indicates that, that is readily doable. Yeah. Let me see how much the backyard is fenced. Yeah, it is fenced in its entirety. Um, it occurs to you that it's good Sophia is not out here, for there are some nice trees out yes. in this backyard. I will happily I'm use these one. trees to my <laughs> advantage. Okay. And the, the, the black or the gray of the sweater and her dark hair just be as <laughs> as sneaky as possible. You are out there for five minutes. You are out there for ten minutes. Nothing. You were out there for 15 minutes. There isn't any activity. At the 15 minute mark, you do see someone inside the house is using a very powerful flashlight for there are no interior lights on, but there is illumination and it moves in a manner that you would imagine a, uh, a flashlight that is being cast about um, may make. At the 20 minute mark that back door opens up the door that you use to gain entrance to the manse house uh -huh. and it looks like the uh, the Hispanic police officer Hector Martin comes out with a flashlight and he goes out into the backyard and he is shining the flashlight into the trees that make up the very far back the border of the manse or should I say the Heimglimmer property? Oh, going towards the, the trees in the back. Oh, boy. He is walking that way, and you can tell that by his angle, as he is cutting diagonally across the man's backyard, it looks like he will end up near the back gate to Lisa Gray's house. The back gate of her fence. It has a gate around back that you use to exit. And it would probably use, if you were in the yard raking leaves or something, you would go out this back gate to, to sort of like unload a wheelbarrow full of debris or lawn cuttings into the woods behind you. Yeah. Oh, boy. Oh, dear. <laughs> Man, coming closer to the house is bad. It's bad. I'm going to go and this sneak man my way back into rugged, the house. Pretty rugged. I would like you to make a a stealth roll. I'm going to let you make this stealth yeah. roll at plus two because you can see in the dark. Okay. That is not bad. Would you like there to roll again? Because this is an opposed roll. If to. I roll a new one, I have to keep the new one, don't I? No, no, you keep the best of the best of the two, unless okay. the second one is a crit fail. Uh, I, I, was going to yeah. say. <laughs> I, I, I have to tell you that. I mean, I'm, yeah, it's no fucking two. It's the fine print. <laughs> um, it is still plus two. I guess I'll try again. <laughs> Let me see it. Ava is using a Benny oh. Jones roll. And I don't better. think you gave yourself a oh. plus two to that one. So we'll call Not that good. a we'll call that a thirteen. Yeah. <laughs> You're safely inside at the moment that you um entered the sliding glass door, the beam of the flashlight was attenuated back towards the woods not into the back of Lisa Gray's yard. All right. Uh, I'm going to tell them that he is looking around back there. Um, I I don't know. Maybe he's looking around for for uh, potentially 
whoever else may have been in there. You think he'll come in here? I don't know, maybe. I touched a lot of stuff in there, guys. Am I going to jail? <laughs> With no, the, there no, is no, no, there is no mistake in the fact that that back gate is opened and somebody with a flashlight is in Lisa Gray's backyard right now. And we'll say that that flashlight reduces its illumination. It looks like it's got a couple of different settings. Um, and looks like the lesser setting, which gives it a very limited illumination, is now in use as an individual is creeping up towards the back of the house. Should we hide the stuff we found in there, maybe? Take all of us stuff. Huh? It, it, I have pepper spray. Stuff out of the hall gonna... <laughs> Should I use my pepper spray? It's a stranger in the backyard. I could spray why it in the face. Why don't we wake up uh, the but, owner of the house? Yes. Let, let, let Lisa know that there was light in the backyard and that but, we're safe and the zombie thing is dead, but we don't know. Oh, God, we don't know. Well, no. Let's just tell her that yeah, yeah. that we're, while we were conducting our stuff and making sure nothing happened to the kids, uh, somebody's sneaking into the backyard, and maybe she should call the cops. We'll yes. do. We'll yeah. do. The beam of a flashlight <laughs> is shining from directly outside the sliding glass door. The sliding glass door handle, someone is trying to open the door. I think you would probably have had the good sense to lock it. Um, it yeah. jiggles a little bit, and the flashlight beam shakes a little bit. You see the dark figure, the dark shadow of a large man, sort of trying to peer in through the somewhat diaphanous um, rear curtains that cover the um, sliding glass door. Oh, I'm going to go wake up, Lisa. Yeah. The beam of light recedes as it looks like that individual is going to the east, perhaps to look into Marissa's bedroom. Oh. Okay, cool. now he's just yeah. creepy as well as... <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to wake up. I'm going to wake up, Lisa, with, with Sophia. You see a Going ring of salt way. around the bed. Okay. Yeah, we did put that there. Nothing's been disturbed. How are they sleeping? Are they okay? Lisa snores a little bit. <clears throat> the little girl is tossing and turning. Sleeping, but not deeply. Not getting that real satisfactory REM sleep, that REM sleep cycle that you dream and know. Her her sleep is um, uncomfortable at best. It's probably she's sweating, as you can see. Uh, her bangs plastered to her forehead. Poor baby. Every once Don't... in a while, she'll say something like, no, no, or something like that. She moans in her sleep. Lisa continues to snore. <clears throat> um, I'm going to go uh, hop over that salt ring and uh, wake up the uh, Miss Gray and tell her that there is a stranger in the backyard trying to peek into the yard or inside oh, of the house. Oh, Ava, you can certainly do that, but I do want you to... um to realize that in no uncertain terms, it was Detective Hector Martin that was in the backyard. He, yeah. We weren't, he's never he, been introduced. He's a stranger to us. Stranger <laughs> danger. Oh, I know. I just want to I just want to make sure that you don't think this is some stalker that is, you know, not related to the individuals that I guess we should let her know that it is okay. uh, I just want to make sure that I was clear to you. Early. Now you can tell Lisa Gray whatever you like. I want to make sure it's my responsibility oh, as Dean yeah. to make sure that I've given you <laughs> correct facts yeah. and what you choose to do with them. It would probably be a good idea to let her know that it is the weird detective in the backyard. Okay. 
I don't know why he's checking in on the house like this. It seems out of his uh, jurisdiction to be doing. <laughs> the flashlight comes in her bedroom window as you are just getting ready to cross the salt line. <laughs> you freeze in place. You probably close your eyes and turn your head away, hoping that the, you know nothing reflects like your glasses. Yes, the lenses yeah. from your glasses, glasses would reflect that. Yes. Buddy. The lights recede. Oh. <gasps> Finally, gonna go and uh, wake her. I'll go and wake her up after the after it passes. Yes. It seems um, like they are. Uh... Oh, Ava. Are... Is everything all right? Do you need something? Miss Gray. Miss Gray. A detective from earlier is being creepy and looking into the house with a flashlight. He went into the man's house after we were in there. There was a lot of things that happened, but I think you should call the police because this is really weird and very uncomfortable. She gets up out of bed, puts a uh... Like a like a, a robe a robe on sort of covers oh, her uh, covers her slim frame and her uh, you know sort of you know yeah. thin uh, sleeping sleepwear that she was wearing. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, what what did you find in there? Did you take anything? Um, <laughs> we found some stuff and we handled some things and I think that it might have helped, but we're not sure entirely, but as soon as we left, um, these cars came through and a couple of men went over very eerily into the house after we left and we think that they are doing some bad things and one of them is the detective and the detective is creeping in the backyard. And we didn't like it, so we thought we should tell you about it. It's like freaking out. She puts on a, um, like, a like a pair of sandals. And she says, um he's, he's looking in the house with a big old flashlight, and it's really creepy. We don't know why he's doing that. He looked in the he looked in the both yours and your daughter's bedrooms. He's creepy. Like, I don't think a, a police officer should be doing that in the late evening. She says, well, um, stay, to the, stay to the corners of the room. Stay away from the windows. I'll go out front and I will talk to him and see if I can't find out what he thinks. Okay. Uh, is that what do you guys think that's a good idea? <laughs> Sophia, what are you doing with the with the firearm with the Sig Sauer? Uh you have it just tucked in your backpack or in a pocket or it, it is in my back pocket. I just I just I I want to put it somewhere. I don't want to keep it on me right now. Okay. You have a fire alarm? What? Fire alarm. Firearm. Gun. Oh, yo, oh, the yeah. I have, have the, the gun. gun. Where would Erica put it? I where would I don't know. What, you, you, I, you I would know, but I'm trying to remember. Oh boy, spirit of Erica. Where would Erica put her gun? The spirit she, of Erica. She'd put, she'd put the uh, she'd put the safety on, and she'd slip it in the back of um the back belt that holds her chaps in place. Oh. Would she have been could a good like time to she could reach some chaps. Well, yeah, she could reach around to the small of her back and pull it out. Uh, Lisa's she like to hide her guns. Well, should I um? <laughs> I mean, should I should I go out and try to make them go away, or or do you think we should just stay put here and and see what happens? Guys, uh, should she go and talk to him and maybe distract him? And we can go and 
talk to the coroner or catch him in the act. You want to go back down there? I mean, not really, but also people are bad and we need to stop bad people, okay? No! <clears throat> She's like, well, I, I mean, I'm I'm not a very good liar, but I can be very convincing when I need to be. It sort of comes with the uh, comes with the job, right? Being an attorney. I bet you're a great lawyer. I just I I, I just can't imagine that nice Detective Martin being involved in anything um, illegal or da- or, or, oh. or, or or you know dangerous, but not in the line of work. Oh boy, I don't know. Guys, do you think do you think we should go back to catch the coroner or 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 what? Hmm. Would it be worth it? Cause if poor Marissa is still tossing and turning, I don't think we got what we needed. I think we need to go back like we're missing something maybe we do have to go back oh there's a man in the house he's not in the house he's outside the house just think of it like that there's another man in the house there's another man in the house he looks a little like the scarecrow from the batman (laughs) just a little (laughs) (laughs) and lisa gray bears an uncanny resemblance to to a woman in jurassic park (laughs) Oh boy. I I think we missed something, guys. If she's still tossing and turning, there's something wrong here. I think we have unfinished business in that house. In a book that we couldn't really read, right? Three books <laughs> that you cannot really read. Yeah. I can't Google Translate this, can I? Google tra- uh, Google. You, I don't you think can. You can. It would take time, certainly. You'd have to figure out how to use the alternative keyboard that has like umlaut characters and the circumflex characters. Those are not Uh, ASCII set characters. Certainly somebody with some computer know-how would probably be able to. Would need help with this. I could do that with you or I could, I could do it. I, I have computer knowledge, research knowledge. Does Shep think, from his first vision, does he think that it's actually located in the house next door? No. Nothing that you have seen. The closest thing that you've seen would be the garage where the Volkswagen, the Red Beetle, was. But the dimensions were all off. And there were not two round tables or pedestals with um, two canoptic jars. And there was not that earthy, loamy presence. Mm -hmm. Nothing in there really smelled like earth. It more smelled a little bit like motor oil and lawn clippings, like old dead grass. Certainly the basement where you were, the Temple of Osiris. You know, similar, similar artwork, but the dimensions, again, were wrong. What you were in was more like a um, like the walls of a storage unit where uh, um, drywall has been erected and it's been sealed with that uh, drywall patch, that white paste that you scrape on and sand, but then you don't paint over it because it's an interior wall that doesn't need to be painted. Yeah, I look at Ava and I go, there's... He he didn't keep his his souvenirs <clears throat> there. I think we just stumbled down to his um, his workplace, his little altar, like his personal okay. religious mm-hmm. deal, and his guard. Mm-hmm. I don't think he kept nothing. Nothing about. No place in his house was the right, was right for the the original vision where we where we saw or I saw all of his souvenirs. 
So no. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, okay. With that, I invoke the, uh, the Dean Fiat. Since I am running this game, I can run it in any way, manner, shape, or form that I wish. We're going to hold this scene right here. And I'm going to sprint us forward to midterm exams on Monday morning. And we are going to use the last several minutes of this session to do your midterm roles. And if you pass, you will begin the next session Please. with an advance. <laughs> Since I'm the dean, I can do that. Yeah. <laughs> Sophia, um, re refresh my memory. I think I think something tells me, thinking mm -hmm. back, there was like a pop quiz, was there not? Yes, there was. There was a pop quiz, which you did very well on. You recognized the name of the painter of the screen. Was it Mencha? Mencha? Mench? I have already forgotten. It was Mench. Under the pop quiz stuff, yeah. It was Munch. Munch. Munch, 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 Edvard Munch or Munch. I don't know. Right. Yes, I remember that one. To be able to sure read the German, German thing. thing. <laughs> <laughs> exams. I do love exams. Page twenty-five. Um, Sophia, an art major. Ava, chemistry major. Shep, a biochemical engineering major. Very difficult studies. Um, Ava, you have the test taker uh, edge, I do you not? It gives me plus two in academics. You are sophomores, mm -hmm. which means mm -hmm. that it starts to get a little harder, and you'll take a minus one to these rolls. Who among you would like to go first? And since I'm put, since I'm pulling my little shenanigans, my little my little <laughs> Dean Fiat on you at the end of the session, I've bumped all of your bennies up to three, which is okay. what you would start yeah. off with, because I don't want to be unfair. Um, Who would like to roll first? I can go first. I just need to know what I'm supposed to roll. I believe your role is going to be science. Okay. So let it's me, that Let one. me see. I just wasn't yes. sure because I have a four in academics too. Yeah, that helps. That helps. That helps doing some of the language um, uh, okay. stuff that you do. But, um, okay. but generally science. Science is going to be your role. You are going to take a minus one because you are now okay. a sophomore. You don't have any other things that add a plus. You didn't pass your pop quiz. So this is a straight up um, science roll at minus one. Four. Yeah. Four is and, your target number. And Ava, Ava's been too busy tutoring Sophia to tutor me, unfortunately. But I would see that chemistry and biochemical engineering are, are tightly interlaced in which I think I've commented that you two pass each other in the hallway or on campus fairly often yeah. during the day, whereas Sophia spends a lot of her time over the Martha Annex, uh, the Martha Patterson um, Hall and the Annex uh, with her art stuff. Okay, that's a six. <clears throat> a six will be a success. With a six, you may roll two d6 and add them together. This doesn't have a wild die or anything associated with it. A seven. seven. This is the best one. Past exams chart. Lucky seven. Something you did this semester paid off in karma. You get one extra Benny each session until your next advance. Oh. Yay. Nice. Congrats. So four pennies. Woohoo. Ladies, right. who feels who feels lucky? Who would like to go next? I will go next. Ava, you get a plus two because of your edge of being a, a test taker. You're well versed in preparation. 
gauging what the instructor is going to expect on the exam and any other sources of information you should read, like on the syllabus, like other recommended readings, and you go to town on those early and often to try to, in case some of the uh, material is taken from that. So you can roll your, your chemistry, your science roll, with a plus two and a minus one. Okay. Plus two oh. for the edge, minus one for the difficulty. How I can do a plus two, but I don't know how I'm going to do minus one. But... Well, just add one. Just do a plus one overall. Oh, herpeter. I did that wrong. Well, I got a six. <laughs> a success. You compare notes with Shep after your exam. You think the instructors are going easy on the class for some reason. You just can't mm -hmm. quite explain it. You can roll 2d6, <laughs> add them together, and we will give you a benefit on the past exams chart. We already know a 7 is kind of like the luck edge. A 5. Got five. An administrative privilege. Someone in administration likes you. For now. You got the connections edge with a non-teacher of the of the ETU. It's my choice, but you can recommend somebody until your next advance. So you can tell me who you would like to have that edge with, and I'll try to think of who I would like you to have that edge with, and we'll meet somewhere in the middle. And someone is going to give you that connections edge, which will sort of give you that um, probably either once or one time per session that little benefit, like a. Uh, making friends with the woman in human resources or administration who could maybe slip you the address of somebody on campus that you're trying to look up, as an example. Just, a, just an example. Or, alternately, you make friends with one of the, um, perhaps one of the female custodians in one of the halls where you hang out. And, of course, it couldn't be a man because you'd be very afraid <laughs> to talk to him. But, you know, one of the woman janitors, the custodians that comes in, does the mopping and the cleaning and emptying the trash, that person might have a key that opens a room that you might need to get into. And you could certainly call in that chit of your connections edge to try to get to borrow that key, for example. Just let your imagination run wild. I'm yes. pretty wide open with what you might want to do with that. And we go to Sophia. Sophia, art is your jam. You get a plus one to this role because of your um, you took advantage of an opportunity to uh, to do well on a pop quiz. A plus one on this exam, plus a minus one because you're a sophomore. Plus one, minus one, so just yeah. straight roll. Straight All up, right. and we'll call this. I think performance is your role, correct? Oh. Okay. You have art. Actual art. <laughs> okay. Yeah, I have an art thing. We should go back and um, we should probably consolidate that. It puts you at a little bit of a disadvantage if you have something special called art. You should put that into. We're going to change that and make it performance. And it remains a D6. So, because art, art and music. Um, drama, certainly, um, I think are more performance-based. And performance, you can do for more than that. You can do a whole oh. great many things with that. But it says art. For, for the moment, we'll just sort of pretend it says performance. And, um, boy, you're not sure that that, um, that collage that you worked on, you just don't know if it's going to quite have the oomph that can you Can I bet you that? You certainly can, Benny, that. On a critical fail. Oh, on a critical oh, fail, I was going to rule that it got ruined on your way oh, no. to your midterm for your presentation. And, Did you realize we've all got a six? It's quite, um, quite phenomenal. Nice. A six is a success. Your collage, the verdant greens and oranges, yellows and reds, the pieces of bark, um, the twigs, the branches, the vines, the blossoms that you had affixed uh, to that piece of poster board to, um, to represent just the evil nature of trees 
And he probably entitled it something like The Evil in Trees. And that might have, mm-hmm. uh, that, that imaginative flair probably boosted your, uh, your midterm exam score a little bit. You can also roll two D6s. And let's see. An 11. Want to grab a drink? Another yeah. another student, Dean's Choice, although I'm open to um, anyone that you'd be interested in doing this. Another student takes an interest in you. You get a plus two charisma when dealing with him or her. Mm. You can think of who you might want this to be. You can make up somebody if you want. Say there's a grad student that works for Glenn McClanahan. I know that you help Glenn Mack categorize and organize and, and do his stuff um, over uh, in, the, in the archaeology building. So uh, anyone you'd like to, um, to have a little, a little charisma with to help persuade <laughs> you to, to, you know, to help you or to do things or, you know, you know to slip you a, an answer key or um, maybe, <laughs> you know, some of the better art supplies that are on uh, that are in store, something like that. It can be anybody you like, although um, if there's nobody you can think of, I'll certainly create a persona, and that will be the person that you've got charisma with. Could be somebody that uh, works in the library, perhaps a research assistant, or perhaps somebody that does IT that might be able to help you with... Um, computer searches or other such research. This is certainly well within the milieu of what I'm looking for. Cool. And also just because I'm just so curious as to how this dinosaur painting, this mural came <laughs> out. Sophia, I would like you to make that art roll as well. You're coming off the high of that collage, of a job well done, of sticking to and adhering to the hard work that you had to do, coming awful close to those trees to collect pieces of bark and whatnot. Um, it wouldn't do to have somebody else go up and collect the bark for you. So with an art roll at plus two, that also represents the fact that anything you mess up, you can always paint over and start over again. But right. you've got brachiosaurus. You've got, of course, the T-Rex, perhaps a triceratops in the foreground. You've got sort of make-believe inlaid um, little little scenes of a dinosaur footprint cast in plaster. You have bones being unearthed, perhaps one of those two or three level um, archaeology uh, digs. All that good stuff. You've got um, make-believe sort of fantastic uh, jungle growth, big ferns and leafy, leafy trees in the background, and of course a um, a very big and prevalent sun beating down and providing warmth to these uh, these great beasts. I'd like a art at plus two, a four is a success. going to take that wounds minus one away since we're fast forwarding this would have happened when you were unwounded so that plus two would actually give you a five you are quite happy with your work there's a place that you had to paint over and and do it over just to get the perspective maybe the archaeological dig you had to paint over and get that that inverted um not tesseract but what do they call those those steps those step buildings, ziggurat. You've got that inverted ziggurat look of the archaeological dig where it's like a, a rim and then a little hole that's deeper and then a rim and a little hole that's deeper and people uh, pulling out uh, bones and, and they've got their little digging implements in their hands. But well done, well done. That will certainly liven up and add a degree of, uh, of newness and freshness and beauty and inspiration to the students that grace the entrance area of the archaeology ar- building. So very well done. Very, very well done. 
Um, and you, if you look really closely in this corner, you'll see a very small Barney. Uh oh. <laughs> <laughs> Oh. But you have to know where you have to look really hard, though. Wait a minute. It's, it's like an Easter egg. Yeah. <laughs> Glenn Mack isn't going to notice that on Earth Plus. Is there anyone that you would like to paint really small, like a, a, a representative of, of them, like doing the archaeological dig or, or examining the uh, plaster cast of the footprint? I would like to put, like, a very small version of all of us. Okay. Like, okay. somewhere. Yeah, yeah. In, in, like, this corner and that corner. You know, and yeah, all that. Cute. That's wonderful. I like that. Uh, I really do I'm like so that. I'm so excited. That's um, sweet. And to close this session out, I would like to uh, to say that you've got a text message from Glenn Mack. Um, it goes to all of you, of course, but it starts off with, Sophia, love the artwork. Why did we wait so long to do this? Question mark, question mark. Shrug emoji. <laughs> Single space. Um, I'm going to ask um, if you've considered uh, collectively all of you taking Jackson's place until we can discover his whereabouts. Are you interested in some work on the side? Question Always. mark. Question mark. Question yeah. mark. Praying hands. <laughs> Pray hands. <laughs> oh goodness. I'm just gonna text back. Um, yes, in all capitals. Yes. <laughs> awesome. Uh, yes. Got a pay ship back for his truck somehow. Okay. So <laughs> right? as a as a teaser, he writes back and says, "I have just the job for you tonight." However, that occurs in the future. What we have, where we will start off next time, is with the three of you crouching hidden in Lisa Gray's house. As Lisa moves like a specter through the, um, through the house with her you know, robe on and her, her sandals. Not sure whether to go out and talk to Hector Martin or not. And Dr. Ravinowitz, who she doesn't really know. Um, yeah. that well. She can identify him. Certainly he has come in and given some forensic reports and testimony in court. She could certainly pick him out of a lineup of four or five, but she hasn't truly interacted with him other than maybe asking him a few questions on the stand. And that is where we will pick up the next time we play.